His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of the Kingdom of Morocco on the anniversary of the King and People's Revolution Day of Morocco. His Majesty the King expressed his best wishes to the Moroccan monarch for good health and happiness and to the people of Morocco for further progress and prosperity under King Mohammed's wide leadership. His Majesty praised the strong fraternal relations between Bahrain and Morocco and the development and growth they are witnessing in various tracks, stressing Bahrain's keenness to strengthen and consolidate these bilateral relations in order to fulfill the aspirations of both people. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Mohammed VI of the Kingdom of Morocco on the occasion of the King and People's Revolution Day of Morocco. His Royal Highness sent two similar cables to the Crown Prince of Morocco, His Royal Highness Prince Moulay Hassan and the Prime Minister of Morocco, Aziz Khanouche. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghadaybiya Palace. The cabinet highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's commitment to promoting the values of coexistence and openness to all cultures and religions which are fundamental to the kingdom's identity. The cabinet welcomed the royal order issued by His Majesty the King establishing the King Hamad Award for Peaceful Coexistence which is in line with the kingdom's vision of enhancing global peace and coexistence and promoting dialogue and coexistence among civilizations. The cabinet expressed its congratulations on the 23rd anniversary of the Supreme Council for Women. The SCW, the cabinet, also noted that the role of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and president of the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, in enhancing women's empowerment and furthering the accomplishments of Bahraini women. The cabinet commended Bahrain's international success at the Paris 2024 Olympics, including winning four medals, two gold, one silver and one bronze, adding to the kingdom's accomplishments across the Sports sector. The cabinet congratulated all those for the Kingdom of Bahrain and Arab na nations who supported Team Bahrain at the Olympics to achieve these impressive results which alleviated the Arab accomplishments in the Olympics and international competitions. The cabinet emphasized Team Bahrain's commitment to enhancing the Kingdom's international sports standing in light of the sports submitted by the Minister of Health on the uh, cochlear implant program at the Salmania Medical Complex. The cabinet followed up on the His Royal Highness's directives for the swift completion of cochlear implant surgeries for those on the waiting list. The report outlined the support provided by the concerned authorities in implementing these directives as well as details on the swift completion of the directives during August 2024, a move that furthers health care services for citizens. His Royal Highness directed all ministries and government authorities to facilitate the procedures for issuing licenses, including the development of regulations that simplify and reduce the steps of issuance to enhance the Kingdom's investment environment and development to benefit the citizens. The Cabinet affirmed the Kingdom's support to all regional and international efforts to consolidate global security and peace, avoid further tension and conflicts, and ensure stability and security to promote regional progress and prosperity. The cabinet uh, then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee on the Government Priorities Framework 4.0. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding several priority draft laws aimed at keeping pace with development needs that benefit citizens. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Finance and National Economy regarding the annual report and audited financial statements of the Future Generations Reserve Fund for the fiscal year ending 31st of December 2023. The report outlined the total assets of the Future Generations Reserve Fund, which amounted to 768.9 million U.S. dollars in 2023, an increase of 25.2 percent year on year. The report further revealed that the fund achieved a total gross income of 64 million dollars and a positive return on average investments of 9.6 percent. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the progress in developing 500 government services within seven months across 24 government entities. 
A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to five proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning regarding a draft resolution on housing regulatory procedures. The changes made in the procedures aim to serve and benefit citizens in this field. The memorandum includes the cancellation of the condition that stipulates that a family shall not benefit from housing services if the wife inherits a property. The change the criteria will only include a review of the monthly salary income when granting a family the nomination certificate and the monthly salary income will not be reviewed again during the housing allocation process. And a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Housing and Urban Planning drafting or regarding a draft resolution amending the regulatory requirements for construction and housing project areas contributing to the possibility of expanding the building areas of the housing and residential units. The Cabinet then took note of the Ministerial Report on the Outcomes of the Visit to Kuwait for the Signing Ceremony of the Tourism Cooperation Agreement between Bahrain and Kuwait. His Royal Highness said the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Second Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Sheikh Daij bin Salman Al Khalifa Al Khadibiya Palace. Sheikh Daij bin Salman presented a book titled "The King, a Leader and Sports Pioneer" to His Royal Highness, a gesture that was also appreciated by His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness affirmed that the far-reaching visions and directives of His Majesty. King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa form the basis of advancing the kingdom's sports sector. His Royal Highness highlighted the remarkable accomplishments achieved by the youth and sports sectors, a testament to the unwavering efforts of Team Bahrain. His Royal Highness commended the efforts in preparing the book, which contains four chapters on His Majesty the King's involvement in the sports sector. His Royal Highness uh, Prince Salman bin Hamad expressed his gratitude for His Excellency Sheikh Daij bin Salman's efforts in enhancing the kingdom's sports sector through various programs and initiatives and strategies. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of documenting the most prominent events in uh, the Kingdom's sports history and shedding light on His Majesty the King's ongoing support for Bahrain sports sector and Bahraini talent. The book will serve as a vital reference and a source of inspiration for future generations. Sheikh Daij expressed his gratitude for His Royal Highness support in furthering the youth and sports sector to meet the Kingdom's aspirations. The Mis Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with Ziad Al Rawai and his son Mohammed Ziad Al Rawai at Ghadibiya Palace in commemoration of the latter's graduation from the Royal Military Academy in Sandhurst. His Royal Highness congratulated Officer Cadet Mohammed Ziad Al Rawai on being awarded the International Sword Award and from the Academy, which is given to the most distinguished international cadet. His Royal Highness commended the successes achieved by Bahraini citizens across all fields who are driven by their their love for the kingdom and strive for its advancement and development. His Royal Highness also congratulated all Bahraini graduates from the Royal Military Academy of Sandhurst, wishing them continued success in their military careers. For their part, Ziad Rawai and his son Mohammed Ziad Rawai expressed their appreciation for His Royal Highness's support and encouragement to Bahraini citizens to continue achieving successes that contribute to the kingdom's wide-ranging growth and development. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, His Excellency Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa, Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Chairperson of the National Bank of Bahrain, MBB, Hala Yatim, at Ghadibiya Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to enhancing the performance of the financial and banking sector in support of the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom of Bahrain has a wealth of national banking experts who have enhanced the financial and banking sector and helped attract investments in the Kingdom. He congratulated uh, the Chairperson and your team on her election as chairperson of the board of directors of the MBB, making her the first woman to hold this position since the establishment of the bank, wishing her success in carrying out her duties. His Royal Highness highlighted the vital role Bahraini women play across various sectors, noting their achievements in the financial and banking sector. 
He also underscored the efforts and implemented the initiatives of local banks in advancing the kingdom's competitiveness in the sector in line with national development goals. For her part, Chairperson Yatim expressed her gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting his commitment to supporting the kingdom's financial and banking sector in line with Bahrain's far-reaching economic aspirations. She further extended gratitude to His Royal Highness for congratulating her on her position, recognizing the kingdom's unwavering support to Bahraini citizens that have enabled them to excel across all sectors. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Chief of Executive, the Chief Executive of Bahrain Economic Development Board, Khalid Ibrahim Hamidan, also attended the meeting. His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the great humanitarian role supported by His Majesty the King, the honorary president of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, represents a model of giving and an incentive for everyone to follow in His Majesty's footsteps in humanitarian work. His Highness affirmed that His Majesty is a leader in humanity, as the humanitarian work in Bahrain is derived from His Majesty's vision, support, and care in extending a helping hand and providing assistance to various countries countries across the world during the different humanitarian circumstances they face. His Highness praised the support and dedication of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his keenness to constantly support humanitarian and charitable efforts. His Highness affirmed uh, that His Majesty the King's patronage of charitable and humanitarian work within Bahrain has contributed to the RHF's pursuit of a comprehensive vision that includes the sponsorship of Bahraini orphans and widows, the development of services provided to them and the provision of comprehensive social, educational and health care. His Highness stated that the RHF is honored to be an extension of His Majesty the King's generous hand in providing support to various people suffering from the pain of conflicts, wars and natural disasters. The Bahraini efforts include the establishment of numerous relief and development projects that have played a prominent role in assisting or in, in assisting affected people, preserving their dignity, rebuilding lands and providing support to individuals in all countries. The Secretary General of the RHF, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, extended his deepest gratitude and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his unlimited support of the humanitarian work project in Bahrain. He added that His Majesty's great interest in ensuring that the foundation becomes a strong arm for humanitarian work and contributing to addressing humanitarian issues and the challenges. He also expressed his sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his support for all the foundation's work and for facilitating its mission. He expressed his deep gratitude and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad for his significant role in the field of humanitarian work and his continuous follow-up and support of the foundation activities. Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa stated that over 23 years, the RHF has achieved notable accomplishments both locally and internationally, establishing its leading position in charitable and humanitarian work. On World Humanitarian Day, the Speaker of the Council, Representative Ahmed Al Msallam, has affirmed that the royal vision of His Majesty the King, supported and followed up by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is the cornerstone of the humanitarian work system and Bahrain's notable message to humanity. The Speaker expressed his pride in Bahrain's distinguished humanitarian record and his ongoing keenness to support international efforts in upholding the principles of human brotherhood and solidarity while fulfilling national duties and responding to the humanitarian needs of all people. He commended the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad and his continuous work to achieve the royal vision in advancing charitable and humanitarian work both within and outside of Bahrain. He valued Bahrain's commitment to advancing humanitarian work at all levels and the establishment of the Joint Charitable Work Committee for the GCC countries. Al Salam affirmed that the parliamentary support for humanitarian work, the development, or the development of the charitable system and keenness to highlight Bahrain's humanitarian diplomacy efforts. On the occasion of International Humanitarian Day, the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that Bahrain has set a distinguished example in comprehensive humanitarian initiatives and fruitful charitable projects reflecting the royal directives of His Majesty the King. The chairman praised the royal patronage and ongoing support from His Majesty the King for the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF work. He noted that Bahrain has become a model in noble humanitarian care 
and providing diverse relief aid to people affected by disasters, achieving a prominent position in humanitarian and charitable work. He expressed his immense pride for the support and interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in Bahrain's humanitarian and charitable efforts. He praised the diligent efforts and significant ongoing initiatives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad in the field of charitable and humanitarian work. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Azoumi, praised the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain led by His Majesty the King in supporting humanitarian work on the occasion of World Humanitarian Day. Al Azoumi affirmed that Bahrain has taken serious and unprecedented steps in the field of humanitarian work, which has made it occupy a prominent position at the Arab regional and international levels. He stressed that the high royal vision of His Majesty the King represents a roadmap to support humanitarian work and a model to be emulated at all levels. He praised the support and care of His Royal Highness as the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for the humanitarian and charitable work carried out by the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world in celebrating World Humanitarian Day amid a number of pioneering humanitarian initiatives which comes in implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King to extend a helping hand to brotherly and friendly countries. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always been known for its humanitarian endeavors and extending a helping hand to the needy and affected in various parts of the world. This is the humanitarian trait rooted in Bahraini origins, whose features were shaped by the keenness and interest of His Majesty the King, who established a humanitarian culture that contributes to the advancement of humanitarian affairs for the benefit of all humanity. This noble approach was demonstrated during His Majesty's prosperous era through the issuance of the Royal Decree establishing the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, which became the humanitarian arm of the Kingdom. The Foundation, under the supervision of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, played a prominent and important role in providing humanitarian work to citizens and residents and supporting the needy and those affected in different countries of the world. The Isa Award for Service to Humanity, which was established in 2009, also represents a clear reflection of the humanitarian approach that Bahrain is following under the leadership of His Majesty the King. On the occasion of the World Humanitarian Day, it is worth noting with pride the great humanitarian efforts undertaken by Team Bahrain under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, based on the humanitarian vision that characterizes Bahrain to preserve humanity in various adversities and times through solidarity among all members of Team Bahrain. The mission of humanitarian work sponsored by the Kingdom of Bahrain is moving forward on the path of extending bridges of aid and distinguished humanitarian initiatives to various brotherly and friendly countries within the health, social and educational relief campaigns, supporting global efforts to promote the values of humanitarian work and urging the international community and peoples to cooperate and achieve solidarity and interdependence for the sake of achieving world peace. Welcome back. Joining me here in the studio is uh, Dr. Jassim uh, Haji Jassim, who's going to be with us, and we're going to be talking about the fourth edition of the Arab Forum for Artificial Intelligence, which comes within uh, the framework of cooperation between the General Sports Authority, the Ministry of Interior, and the Ministry of Youth Affairs uh, also, which kicked off yesterday and will continue until Thursday. More on this, we are joined, as I have said, uh, by the Executive Advisor of uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Nasser Center for Research and Development in Artificial Intelligence, Dr. Jassim Hajj Jassim. Welcome to the studio Thank for being for with us. Me, Thank you very much. First off, Doctor, can you tell us a little bit about the importance of holding uh, this um, Arab uh, uh, Artificial Intelligence Forum, especially that's being held in Bahrain? Well, this is the, 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 the fourth uh, edition of the AI Arab uh, Youth Initiatives, and, and it's been held, of course, virtually to provide uh, uh, maximum coverage 
to uh, various youth uh, participants in Arab world, and of course, it's been under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who's one of the pioneers in AI in the whole region. He has started his vision over uh, five years ago when, when AI was unheard of. And, and there are many, many uh, initiatives, be it at uh, the award level of recognizing the pioneers in AI or youth or uh, awards for the best projects. Of course, this only cements Bahrain's position as the pioneers in AI and what differentiates us from others that we have a lot of locally made uh, initiatives and yeah. AI solutions that yeah. are on the international level. Right. Um, what are uh, typically the topics that will be discussed during this forum and which will, will be focused on? Well, of course, the, the, the main theme for the event was using AI in sports. Yeah. So we focused on uh, providing overviews and outlook of how AI can help youth and sports. And, and there were real recent examples of using AI in Paris Olympics, mm -hmm. be it at using uh, generative AI like ChatGPT for each yeah. uh, sports man and woman to get their schedules, uh, information yes. about their meals, etc. to analyzing uh, their conditions, uh, the injuries, the forecasting, mm -hmm. the, the, the plans, using uh, assistant, uh, uh, what we call the coaches, that's the virtual assistants, yeah. or going to the refereeing and forecasting the, even the, the theme for recovery of the, the players. But that, that was even taken further now to replacing somehow the, the VAR and the football games and all, all, all the other parts. So we had real good examples of AI, the, the practical examples yeah. to showcase and display them and provide the benefits of AI, the futuristic of generative AI, which is the topic. That's amazing. Uh, one thing Bahrain uh, is always good at doing is being at the forefront, and it has been at the forefront of applying artificial intelligence in most fields. Can you tell us a little bit about the efforts of the kingdom in the field of artificial intelligence specifically? Well, I, I first have to include uh, uh, the initiatives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser's mm -hmm. Artificial Intelligence Research and Development Center, which uh, came to being three years ago. Yeah. And th there are over 65 initiatives or projects related to AI that have been developed by young Bahraini men and women. And these, wh what makes them different is that these are customized and tailored uh, using what we call an open source and not yeah. relying on ready-made solutions and even going to the large language modules, the LLMs, fine-tuning them using pre-models to develop something very customized to our environment in both public and private sectors. And there are many more projects coming up that we take pride on, on those. Definitely. Thank you very much for being with us today and for answering our questions Thank on that. Thank you very much. For now, going on to our next topic, the La Labor Market Regulatory Authority in coordination with the Central Bank of Bahrain and in cooperation with the private sector began issuing the International Bank Account Number I ban for every expatriate worker in the Kingdom of Bahrain. More in this report. A new initiative added to the initiatives of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority regarding developing the work environment to ensure the rights of all parties with regards to facilitating the payment of wages through banking channels. The LMRA has begun issuing the international bank account number, the IBAN, to every expatriate worker in the Kingdom of Bahrain. This initiative came out of the authority's keenness to raise awareness of the importance of electronic banking transactions and providing a safe work environment that guarantees the rights of the employees and the employers. Additional facilities support business owners directly, especially since this process is done electronically, which ensures documentation of the record of payment transactions, reduces judicial disputes regarding the payment of wages, and speeds up the procedures for resolving the litigation file. Temkin announced support for increasing the wages of more than 1,000 Bahraini employees at the Bahrain Airport Service Company, which is equivalent to about 71% of the total Bahraini caterers working in the institution, in addition to supporting the training of 400 Bahraini employees, which contributes to achieving growth and increasing the competitiveness of the employees. The CEO of Temkin, Maha Mufiz, indicated that this support reflects Temkin's commitment to supporting the logistics sector in the kingdom and enhancing Bahrain's position as a leading destination in this 
field. The sector contributed 7.4% to the GDP in 2023, making Bahrain a gateway to the GCC market. The chairman of the board of directors of Bahrain Airport Company, Nabil Khanu, said that the ongoing partnership between BAS and Temkin is a milestone in the company's development, which enhances the development and empowerment of national caterers.